Hello everybody, welcome to another Christmas horror movie review. Today we're looking at P2, which came out in 2007 and stars uh, Rachel Nichols and Wes Bentley. This movie was written by the same guy who wrote and directed the remake of Hills Have Eyes, one of my favorite remakes of all times, next to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Evil Dead. But this is a very well movie. Like, when you have a movie that is solely dependent on two people as your main cast throughout the whole movie in one location and it's still good, you know you got a good movie. Another interesting fact about this movie is this is the movie that taught me the word cunt. I saw this movie in 2007, so I was like 11 years old, and I just remember hearing that in this movie and just looking at my dad like, what do you say? Daddy, what's cunt? Don't ever say that, son. So I will forever remember this movie just because of that fact alone, is that this movie taught me something. Not a good thing, but it taught me something. This is also one of those movies that has songs in it that when you hear those songs in life, you will automatically think of this movie. Every time I hear that song by Elvis Presley, the Blue Christmas song, I just think of this movie every single time. Another thing that this movie makes me think about is when I first saw this movie, my sister started to date this guy and then marry him. <laughs> but... This guy looked just like Wes Bentley, to me at least, as an 11 year old. I saw this guy and I was like, this guy looks like the psychopath I just saw on screen. So now it's scaring me. But he's a good guy, alright, don't worry. He's not a psychopath. This movie takes place on Christmas Eve, which is why I'm doing it for this Christmas review. Duh. And it's about a woman who works at the Empire State Building or some building in New York. And the building's gonna be closed for three days. And when she gets to the parking garage to leave, everyone's gone. And the security guard there, Thomas is crazy about her so he kidnaps her and she has to escape this movie starts and ends at this parking garage this building so it's like a very it's a single setting movie with only like two people like i said you got west bentley and rachel nichols so if there's any weak acting it would destroy this movie but thankfully we got a good cast and the acting in this movie is great west bentley like he is the main positive of this movie like he's almost sympathetic to a weird level like if you're lonely and you watch this movie, you might feel more sympathetic towards him because he's just a guy who has nobody, no friends, no family, and he has to work Christmas Eve by himself with just this dog. And yeah, like, I guess the message you could take away from this movie if you're an employer, don't hire, don't force somebody to work Christmas Eve. That's the lesson. Especially if they're lonely. Especially if they're lonely. I like how throughout this entire movie, he never thinks he's doing anything wrong. Like, even criminal. Like, he just thinks that this woman is trying to get him fired when she calls the cops. And she's trying to, like, she's attacking him. He's like, you're going to get me fired. It's like, no, she's trying to get you arrested because you're a criminal. He's just so playful. It's almost like she's like a Barbie to him. And she's like, he dresses her up. And he's just like having this, like, dinner, this make-believe dinner. And you know how, like, a little kid will have, like, Barbies at a table and have, like, a tea set, like a teacup thing. That's what it kind of reminded me of, except in a psycho adult ver version of it. He just thinks, like, she's like a Barbie to him. He's dressing her up. He's having this dinner, pretending in his little illusion that she could give a shit. But she doesn't. Another creepy thing about this movie is that, it's like, it's crazy to think that you could have a psychopathic co-worker who's obsessed with you, who's just been watching you for years, picking his moment, and now he's finally decided to strike. This movie is just awesome. Like, it's just smart. It's smartly written. Things, like, characters... There's not really many character decisions where you're just like oh why would you do that it makes perfect sense you know the only thing is like she screwed herself when she fell asleep in that lobby because i think she could have left at that moment but she fell asleep before the taxi cab came which played perfect into thomas's hands so if she didn't fall asleep this probably wouldn't have happened this whole movie and this movie just it's realistic you know like a chloroform rag doesn't just knock her out immediately like in the movies when they like breathe the chloroform rag there's immediately ugh. It's like, no, she fights and struggles for like 30 whole seconds. It's realistic. She makes lots of good character decisions. I do find it kind of odd that this entire place didn't have like a fire alarm anywhere. Like any little, like the elevator hallways and the elevator didn't have like a button that calls like the fire department. It just had a security in the local building button to call Thomas. That's the only thing. Like I thought elevators had like fire department buttons, like things that called police, like 911, boof. Or like telephones inside them but this unfortunately her elevator did not so that's just like a little convenience for the bad guy in this movie but it's not gonna ruin the movie and angela our main protagonist has huge boobs this movie has her in a dress that just reveals her cleavage throughout the whole movie and she's running around and there's even a shot in this movie that just shows her chest 
just for like one second, I it just <laughs> it made me laugh when I saw it, like whoa, why did they? I know why they did that. But yeah, just like I said, smart things. Tom has her call her family like right away to lie to them, be like, yeah, I'm okay because you know he doesn't want the family to come looking for her. So just little things in there that are smart, like oh, this is why this is happening. And he manages, he gets lucky. The cops come at one point, and there's a cop in this movie who was in Jason X. That's a familiar face. Not too many people will catch it. He was like the one who got, I think he was the one that was the ship. I forget which one he was. But Tom, like, smooth talks to cops. He explains things, like, why things are the way they are. And he gets them out. So he's scot-free for now. But our bad guy in this movie, Tom, he has a Rottweiler, just like the blind guy in Don't Breathe. Dogs are evil, all right? It's another reason for me to hate dogs. I hate dogs, and it was awesome when she sticks that that iron bar to that Rottweiler's head and it starts whimpering, and she you can just tell she starts to enjoy it because this dog pissed her off, all right? This dog has been fucking her chances of leaving on and on again, and it bites her leg, and she just fucking takes it out, and then, like, you just hear that frustration, like, the acting is just amazing. You hear the frustration, and she's just... Ugh, fucking die, dog. You do get some gore in this movie. There's only a couple deaths in this movie, but the gore is there. Like, he, he just runs this guy over who sexually harassed Angela a couple days ago at a Christmas party at the office, and he caught it. Yeah. I'm not sure how he plans to get away with his murders because everything's on tape, So, but he's a security guard, so I guess he could clean his tracks. I'm not even sure if he plans to escape. I'm not sure what his plans are, but there is a brutal death in this movie. I also love that he just totally taunts his victim like he just fucks with her like he just he's having fun with her like he doesn't even give a shit like i said he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong he's in denial it's like you know you're gonna get me fired and then we can't just live off your salary but when she's in the elevator and he's using that foreign accent when he she calls the security she thinks she's talking to like an outside security like a cop and he's like using like some sort of foreign accent and then he reveals that it's actually him just love that he's taunting her at this moment. Just little things like that I like. And oddly enough, the gore in this movie is not what grosses me out. What grosses me out and makes me actually like shudder and just go, just want to look away is when a fingernail gets cut off. She's reaching for her phone and her nail just comes off in the sound design they use. And she peels it off. And then like for like five minutes after that, she's like holding her hand. Because like I could imagine... How throbbing that would be. Like your hand would throb with pain. And it's just. It's horrible to look at. And I love it. After each kill. Tom says. Way to ruin Christmas. To the people he kills. The uh, gym guy. He goes. Way to ruin the Christmas asshole. And then to Carl. He says it again. It's like. These people are ruining his Christmas. That he's killing. Like I said. Complete denial. He's in the right. He deserves this. He deserves her company. It's just. A, to a total psychopath. And he performs it great just little eye movements his eyebrows he'll be like dead serious and stare at her and then just start talking again like nothing just happened this movie even has one scene that reminds me of texas chainsaw massacre the remake where she's in the locker and you think he's looking at her locker but she's in the one behind it just a little hint like it felt like a little nod to that movie i'm not sure if they purposely ripped it off but it was almost a rip off except she doesn't chop off his arm that would have been a complete rip off but yeah the only negative i have with this movie is that the fire dummy was obvious. Like, they, the fire dummy at the end when Tom dies, spoiler alert, when she lights him on fire because he called her a cunt, that fire dummy, they showed it way too much. They should have just had, like, one frame or something or did something better, have a guy in a fire suit. It just, it was like, wow, that's a dummy, clearly. So they could have fixed that, at least. But other than that, I mean, like I said, there should have been, like, fire alarms. There was no fire alarms anywhere. The elevator should have had something to call police. And she calls police at one moment, and it's like, oh, the lines are too busy right now in New York City on Christmas Eve. It's like, really? There's no cops anywhere? No cops to pick up the phone? How did she call them before? Jeez. And no service on her cell phone. She has a flip phone, which makes this movie dated. Because now, like, in the future, we're all, we all have these iPhones and shit. We're like, oh, remember flip phones? This movie makes me feel nostalgia for the flip phones. I remember... When I had a flip phone. But yeah, overall, this movie was just awesome fun. Tension from almost like beginning to end. One setting, great actors, just great tension. And it's just, it's fun. Like, you don't get bored. You're just, you're rooting her on. You almost feel a little sympathetic towards the antagonist, which is always interesting in a movie like this. 
and it has a Christmas vibe. So this is a great Christmas horror movie. The Christmas aspect of this movie is thrown in there. Like, it doesn't have to be there, but the reason why it's there is to explain why there's nobody really around and why this place is going to be empty for three days so he can have all the time he wants with this victim in this parking garage. So that's really the reason why it's Christmas. But other than that, it's still a Christmas movie. So therefore, it's on my Christmas horror review. But anyways, I love this movie. So I'm going to say when it comes to P2 that this is a great movie that you should definitely go out and buy. <laughs> The Mr. Hadaward is going to go to the gym, I think that's his name. He gets beat in the face with a flashlight 20 odd times, and then he gets his ass crushed up against the wall. Lots of tension building. I love the way they shot this and executed it, and it was disgusting. The Mr. Twig Award is going to go to Carl. He gets killed off camera and then thrown into the elevator. I'm not sure what happened. It looks like he got hit in the head with something, probably a flashlight. But I'm going to just go off. He got hit in the head with something. Way to ruin Christmas, Carl. Those are my thoughts on P2. Have you seen this movie? Did you see it at theaters like I did? Did it teach you to work, cunt, like it did me? I doubt it. But let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below. And as always, you can support this video by clicking this like button over here. And this channel by clicking on my gorgeous cartoon face in 5 seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll see you Disney. Yeah.